This is the first video in a series about the online website Google Earth. So we're going to begin with the best way to access this website. It is an app or button that can be placed on your ClassLink page. If you would rather not place this button on your ClassLink page, it can be added to a Blackboard class to be shared with students, Google Classroom, Edmodo, or even to your web links area so that students and staff members can get to this website. So I'm going to click from my class link to go to Google Earth. And then we're going to click one more time the blue button here in the center that says Launch Google Earth. It will take a moment for this to load. Once it loads, we see the globe image come up and this slow spinning here. In these videos, we're going to talk about the tools that you see in the bottom right hand corner here. That'll be the main focus for this video. And then in future videos, we'll go through the menu that you see over here on the left hand side. So before we can get into the tools that appear in the bottom right, the first thing we'll need to do is pick a location on Earth to visit. So I'm going to begin with this second menu option, the magnifying glass here, to do a search. And we're going to search for Washington, D.C. When you do a search for a location on Google Earth, you can be as specific as you would like by putting in a street address, or you can be as general and generic as you'd like by putting in the name of a country, a continent, an ocean, just to fly to that general location here. So here we can see that we are above the District of Columbia. The border there is outlined in red, and an information card appears in the upper right-hand corner. I'm going to go ahead and close this information card. We'll talk more about this in a future video. As I said, the focus of this video will be this tool set that you see here in the bottom right hand corner. So we're going to begin with the set of tools placed just off to the left here which allow me to zoom out or zoom in on this location. So I can click the plus sign to move closer or the minus sign to move further away. But that same zoom can be accomplished by using the center scroll wheel on your mouse. So if I scroll the wheel on my mouse up, I can zoom in on a location. If I scroll down, I can zoom out on a location. Similarly, if I want to move to a different area of the map, if I click and hold down, I can drag the map to a different location and then zoom in on that area as well. So click to drag and scroll to zoom in and out. Let's go back to our tool set here. You'll see a button here that says 3D. When you click on 3D, what you're doing is tilting the earth so that you're looking across. This allows us to see a little more of the landscape. For example, uh, buildings appear in 3D so we can see them rising up. And the same would happen with um, geographic features like mountains, rivers, and so forth. So you get to see a little bit of elevation. Now the uh, same icon says 2D, and when we click on 2D, we uh, rotate back so that we are just looking straight down on Earth. So 3D allows you to look across. 2D allows you to just look straight down. Continuing on with this tool set, we have an icon here that is known as Pegman, and the purpose of this icon is to enter into Street View. So when you pick up the Pegman icon, just click and drag, all these blue lines will appear on the map. These blue lines indicate that there is street view imagery for this particular area. In addition to seeing blue lines, in some locations you'll see these little blue circles or dots. These indicate that it's not true street view imagery, but what you'll find there are photospheres. So we'll take a look at both of these, the street view as well as the photospheres. To enter into street view, what I'm going to do is place Pegman on one of these blue lines and then I'm going to drop him or release the click and we will fly down and into that Street View location. So here we are down on the mall in Washington DC and I can turn and look around. Now it tells us in the upper left hand corner that what we've actually entered into is one of those photospheres. So the difference between street view imagery and a photosphere is that in this photosphere I can't change to a different position. Like I can't click to go over to this side of the park and change my view. I can only see exactly where the person who was standing when they took the image was and everything that they could see around them. So I'm just clicking and dragging 
in order to move the image and turn. When you're finished in a photosphere, you can click the X to exit out of street view and come back to an aerial view. Let's pick up Pegman again and let's see if we can get a true street view image. So we'll place him right here on this road. And now the difference this time over the photosphere we saw a moment ago are these white arrows down here. These arrows indicate that we can follow the path that the street view car took when capturing these images. And all you have to do is click on one of those arrows to move down the road. When you come to an intersection in the road, you might see three or four arrows indicating that you can move in any direction that the street view car traveled. And here we have the option to turn. All right, once again, if you click the X in the upper left-hand corner, you'll be able to exit out of street view and scroll out. So if you find yourself entering into a lot of street view imagery and exiting out of it, it can be a little bit disorienting not being able to tell which direction you're facing. So that brings us to the icon down here in the bottom, which is our compass. The red arrow indicates north. So if you click on this compass, it will reorient the map so that north is up, what we typically expect to see when we're looking at a map. So that can help you find a location um, when you are entering and exiting out of Street View imagery a lot. Back down to our tool set here, we come to the final uh, icon here, which is the option to fly to your location. So wherever Google Earth recognizes you as being on the map, if you click, you will exit out of your current location and be taken to where you are on Earth. Okay, that is our quick look at the tool set in the bottom right. Join us in a future video for more features in Google Earth.